up. They are unwavering in support of their favorites. And today, they dominate Network Associates Coliseum. They are Raiders fans, as vocal and as loyal a following as there is in the NFL. And they will most certainly be heard today in this AFC Divisional Playoff matchup here in Oakland. It's AFC East champion Miami versus the AFC West champion Oakland Raiders. Welcome to Oakland, everyone. Greg Dumble along with Phil Sims. The Raiders roll into this game off of a 12 and 4 regular season, the league's best rushing attack, and a quarterback playing his best football in his 13th year. You're right, Greg. A lot of people ask me this year, what is the difference in the Raiders? Why did they go 12 and 4? Well, Rich Gannon is the answer, starting for the second straight year, making better decisions, throwing the football better. But the biggest thing is, and Miami's very concerned, that he is running the football at the appropriate times and hurting defenses. Now the Dolphins are here thanks to an overtime win last week over the Colts and thanks to 209 yards and two touchdowns rushing from Lamar Smith. Yeah, Lamar Smith, what a game last week. Look at it, though. 40 rushes, an NFL playoff record. What do running backs do once they carry the football that many times in the playoffs? What do they do the following week? Look at these runners. Look at the following week, what they did. The production is not there. Can Lamar Smith be a physical presence in a game again this week? Well, we got to wait and see. Yeah, the uh, Miami Dolphins were a terrific 6-2 and two on the road during the regular season. The Raiders were an even better 7-1 and one at home. What happens here today? We'll find out next playoff atmosphere it exists along with Mardi Gras and Halloween here in Oakland California it is a beautiful afternoon here in Oakland sunny skies 58 degree temperatures a perfect day for football down on the sideline Armin Katayan is with Oakland wide receiver Tim Brown Tim a sense of this atmosphere and what John Gruden told you guys just moments ago in the locker room well, all he said was go out and play hard. You know, we know we're a good football team. We've had a week off. We all rested, but we got to come out early and play good football. And we'll be all right. All right, Tim. Good luck. Greg. Armin, thank you. The Oakland Raiders have won the toss. They will receive the kick from Miami's Olindo Mare. I think the Raiders coming into this game, they were hoping for a special atmosphere. John Gruden told his players during the week, when you go out there, you're going to feel the difference. Greg, there's no doubt. You and I standing here, we can feel the difference in this stadium. What? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> David Dunn is the deep man for the Oakland Raiders. Mare kicks it away, and we are underway. Dunn from the one. To 25, falls forward to about the 28 or 29 yard line. Brian Walker makes the stop after a 28 yard return. Oakland's quarterback, Rich Gannon, on his way to a second straight Pro Bowl with an outstanding season. More than 3,400 yards and 28 touchdowns passing, more than 500 yards and four touchdowns on the ground. Hey, Greg, making his first playoff start in his career. And I said this in a pregame show. We asked him about it. He looked at me and says, hey, Phil, I'm not some wide-eyed guy that's going to go out there and be awed by this experience. First down from the 29, and Tyrone Wheatley carries and may have gotten a yard just across the 30-yard line. We'll call it two and make it second and eight. You look at the Raiders, their offensive line, it's big. They like to come straight at you and try to knock you over. In the backfield, John Ritchie's bad ankle keeps him sidelined. Zach Crockett starts at fullback. The ever-present Tim Brown with James Jett at wide receiver, and Ricky Dudley is the tight end. There is John Gruden. If he is excited about this playoff game, he didn't show it two days ago. Double tight end set up now on second down. Wheatley spins forward to the 35-yard line. Let's look at the Miami Dolphins defense ready to take on the Raiders' top-rated rushing game. Mixon, Bowens, Gardner, and Taylor, the Miami front four. Look at the linebackers. You have Rodgers, Thomas, and Jones. Zach Thomas, you got to find a way to block him. The outstanding Dolphins secondary, Pat Sertain and Sam Madison on the corner. Brian Walker and Brock Marion are the safeties. The ball at the 35-yard line as Dave Wanstatt looks on. Randy Jordan is in the game on third and four. That's Brown in motion to the far side of the screen. Again in the throw. This side. It is incomplete. Jordan out of the backfield. Had it go right through his hands. 
and the Raiders will kick it away. Well, the one thing these two teams played last year, Miami won it 16 to 9. Rich Gannon said we were absolutely terrible on third down. That time they moved people around. The receivers open. Rich Gannon was a little bit off target. It was the same mantra that you hear all the time. You said when when players look at games they've lost, he said, what were we thinking of? <laughs> we heard that from Rich Gannon yesterday. What a kick. Jeff Ogden to the 20. 25-30. Has running room. Sideline. Midfield. And Leckler runs him out of bounds inside the 45-yard line. A 43-yard punt return by Jeff Ogden, and the Miami Dolphins will have terrific field position. Jay Fiedler, the quarterback, three first-half interceptions last week. He rallied the Dolphins to the tune of 23 second-half points as Miami eliminated Indianapolis. Well, one thing, good field position is going to make Jay Fiedler feel good, but the thing about him is torn rotator cuff in that left shoulder. When you watch him play, it seems like once he gets beat up a little, gets pushed around, quits thinking about that shoulder, he plays a lot better. Line of scrimmage is the 41-yard line. Fiedler, good throw down the sideline. It is incomplete. A diving Tony Martin had it go off his fingertips. Well, Dave Weinstead told us yesterday he wants to help his football team out. So what does he do? Tony Martin, Eric Allen. I watched pregame shows today, and they were saying the Dolphins are going to come out, use double moves on the outside, try to get big plays. Apparently, the Raiders didn't watch the pregame shows. Second and ten. Movement on the offensive line. And the whistle blows the play dead. No play. Penalty flag on the field. Our referee today is Phil Luckett. Offside against the Oakland Raiders. Neutral zone infraction defense on the left end, which caused the offense to move. Five-yard penalty repeat. That Second ball down. is against Tony Bryant. Look at Miami's offensive line. Tim Ruddy and Mark Dixon both had outstanding years. The question today, how will Lamar Smith perform off of last week's 40-carry, 209-yard performance? Gadsden and Martin outside. Hunter Goodwin is the tight end. Play fake. Fiedler. Throws over the middle, caught inside the 20-yard line by number 81, O.J. McDuffie. Well, the one thing, when you play against the Raiders, the Miami Dolphins, they want to come out, you attack a weakness of a team. The weakness is, is the pass defense. The Raiders, 25th in the league, a nice formation. Three players bunched in there together. And then you see Tony Martin breaks it out. O.J. McDuffie, I say, should say, nobody there to cover him. First down, Miami at the Oakland 17-yard line. O.J. McDuffie, four catches for 57 yards a week ago against the Colts. Straight ahead, Lamar Smith. And not much there, Reagan Upshaw with the stop. The Oakland defense, the Raiders with a rugged front four. Tony Bryant, Grady Jackson, Daryl Russell, Reagan Upshaw. Look at the linebackers, Greg Beaker in the middle, William Thomas, Elijah Alexander on the outside. On the corners, three-time Pro Bowler Charles Woodson and six-time Pro Bowler Eric Allen, Marquez Pope, and Anthony Dorsett, the safety. Defensive coordinator for the Raiders, Chuck Bresnahan. Now Leslie Shepard, Tony Martin, O.J. McDuffie all flanked to the top of your screen on second and nine. Fiedler with time, throws intercepted at the 10. Torrey James up the sideline with a blocker in front of him. Breaks free and should go all the way. on the return, Jay Fiedler afflicted with three first-half interceptions last week, throws a big one right here. I was just about ready to say Dave Wanstead 
has got to be so happy about the start of the game. Watch the out in the flat. Here he is. Look at him read the quarterback, Torrey James. He baited Jay Fiedler, made him think he was going outside. He didn't go. Fiedler trying to anticipate. He anticipated wrong. Torrey James had two interceptions during the regular season. Four years at Denver Bronco. This is his first year with the Oakland Raiders and just returned an interception 90 yards. Officially 91 yards now for the touchdown. The extra point is good. 11.36 to play. First quarter. Raiders capitalize on a mistake and lead it 7-0. Raiders have made a habit of returning mistakes for touchdowns. The eighth time this year that they have done that. And that 90-yard, officially now a 90-yard return, is the longest against the Dolphins in Miami playoff history. Denson and J.J. Johnson deep for Janikowski's kick. Denson inside the five. The 20. 25. And met hard at the 30-yard line by Darian Gordon after a 26-yard return. And let's go back to the to the interception. Well, let me show you what happens. Watch Torrey James. All he's going to do is drop back. He has to make a decision to go outside or inside who to cover. He fakes just a little bit to the outside. Jay Fiedler watching. He thinks he goes outside. He loses sight of Torrey James. He fools the quarterback, steps back in, and makes the interception. And Torrey James down the sideline, headed to the place that they love here in Oakland, that end of the field, the black hole. And defensive coordinator Chuck Presnahan says, we got one. Smith and Conrad in the backfield. Lamar Smith bouncing outside, trying to turn the corner and won't do it down at the 23 yard line Marquez Pope Elijah Alexander closed on him a loss of six that play illustrates this Oakland Raider defense it is powerful up inside the defensive line can overpower your offensive line and that's why Dave Watts said today we gonna have to probably win the game throwing the football and making big plays in the passing game Fiedler and the Dolphins looking at a second and 16. Quick flip out of the backfield is Lamar Smith. Smith outside and bumped out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. A pickup of four on the play, and it'll be third and 12. Now look at this. You say you want things to go your way early in the game. Think about the Miami Dolphins. They get tremendous field position. The very first play of the game. They run a double move on Eric Allen. It's a touchdown if the ball is thrown there. But still, they get it down inside. Everything's going good for them. They make the big mistake. Jay Fiedler, the one thing they did not want to do to get the emotion of the crowd and the Oakland Raider uh, players going. Third and 12, four wide receivers, and Fiedler from the shotgun. All kinds of time. Out of the backfield is Denson. Denson, 35, comes up short of the first down at about the 37-yard line. Eric Allen ran him out of bounds along with Greg Beekert after a 10-yard gain. And Miami will be forced to kick it away. You know, you talk to the Raiders, Greg, and the one thing they want to do against this Miami offense today, they watched the game last week against, against the Indianapolis Colts. Hustle to the football. They break tackles. We need as many as we can get to the football. That stops big plays. There is Darian Gordon. He is back at his own 22-yard line to receive the punt from Matt Turk. Short and out of bounds. Shy of the 30-yard line. Rich Gannon and the Oakland offense will have some decent field position to work with when we come back to Oakland right after this. Part of the crowd here, and we have to share with you that on our way to the stadium this morning, we passed one fan who was cruising along in his Mercedes on his cell phone. And how was he dressed, Phil? Oh, he was painted to the max. <laughs> so, you know, whatever you think, we got like some bankers and lawyers that are putting his gear on coming to the game. Again in the throw on first down. Over the middle, wide open. Tim Brown across midfield and into Miami territory. This Miami defense, the number one thing they must do today, stop Tim Brown 
from coming short across the middle and being wide open. I did not expect the scene be so wide open. Watch Tim Brown as he comes across. Number 81. No defender is there. They clean the middle out. Ricky Dully, the tight end, goes up the middle of the field. Nobody inside, and you can't give that away. First down, Gannon, play fake. Steps up, throws, complete. This is Zach Crockett, and Crockett to the 40-yard line of the Dolphins. And let's go down to Armin. Greg, down here on the Miami sideline, it's easy to see this reversal of fortune has really stunned the Dolphins, almost like a punch to the stomach. Just moments ago, Trace Armstrong sat down and next to Zach Thomas, just shaking his head. Both of them realizing, it seems, they got a very big hole to dig out of right now. Back to you. And Zach Thomas is just walking over toward the sideline. Looks a little shaken up. We heard nothing but platitude from the Oakland Raiders regarding Zach Thomas. They said simply, he's the smartest middle linebacker in the NFL. Hey, listen, that is a, you know, he's the, we don't talk too much about this guy because he is a productive player on the field. And Greg, you're right. The Raiders talk about him. The thing that bothers the Raiders are that Zach Thomas, when you come up the line of scrimmage, he calls out your plays and they go, oh my gosh, he's right. So, Twan Russell has replaced him in the middle. That's Thomas, or that's Crockett, rather, for the first down. They continue to look at Zach on the sideline. Let's go back and see what happened to him. Well, he leads. Get you, know, you can see why he was dinged. His helmet hits the leg of the runner. But you know what? He's not going to be on the sideline for long. Line of scrimmage, the 37-yard line, first down for the Raiders. Wheatley and Crockett line up behind Gannon. Gannon, barking out signals, gets the snap off before the play clock expires, and throws this side. It is incomplete, and the penalty marker is down on the near side of the field. Wow, did you hear that that audible he called? Red 24 Dolphin. So, must be a new play for this week. A face mask call against Miami. Now, that was the Miami defense I expect to see. They crowded the line of scrimmage, dared the Raiders, played real close man-to-man -man coverage. Now we're going to have a conversation amongst the officials. Well, let's look at what the Miami Dolphins pass rush. You, Jason Taylor on the outside, 99. Keep Rich Gannon in the pocket. Nice little shot. Oh, man, that's more than a nice little shot. That's that's a heavy-duty shot. Bro. That's, uh, hey, I'm here. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 79. It's a five-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Kenny Mixon. You see the Dolphins with 115 penalties this season, more than they have ever committed as a team in their franchise history. You know, talking about, we saw that pass rush on Rich Gannon. The Dolphins want to keep Gannon in the pocket at all costs. They want to see, can he beat us throwing the football from the pocket and throwing down the field? First down from the 32. Weekly. Wheatley just across the 30. And the ball is loose, but no, it's blown dead at about the 29-yard line. We remind you while we have the opportunity, log on to NFL. First, Patrick Sertain and Sam Madison. John Gruden draws up the plays, defensive plays against his team during the week, and he put on to the corners. Hold our wide receivers. Hold them, because that's what they're known for, put their hand on receivers. Gannon gets hit from behind and goes down at the 38-yard line. And Jason Taylor in on the quarterback again. Well, Jason Taylor, he's showing no favorites. He went up against the, the first play, holding against the Dolphins. This time he's going against Richmond Webb on the left side. Just runs right around him. Makes the tackle. I'm sorry, Barry Sims. Not Richmond Webb. He plays for the Dolphins. Well, what's happening here is Dave Wanstead's receiver defense number 25. This is a five-yard penalty with an automatic first down. 
penalty is on Brian Walker, number 45, the safety. But Dave Wanstead made it definite. He said, we have to start fast against the Raiders and can't let them get the jump on us. He had his opportunity. First down. We Inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line. It's a one-yard gain. And Zach Thomas in on the stop at second and nine. You know, the, the other thing is, too, Greg, it's just you see Zach Thomas, but is the Dolphins' defense, they commit so many penalties. And when you commit penalties in football games, especially against good teams, I said it all year long, when you give the other team three more plays, it's an un unbelievable how many times that leads to a score. They've committed two penalties on this drive alone, second and nine. Play fake. Gannon rolls, flips, incomplete, dropped by Ricky Dudley. Ricky Dudley will never see a softer, easier toss in his life. That time, as you watch Rich Gannon make the fake, Lorenzo Brumel makes the hit on him again, and Ricky Dudley trying to run with it before he gets the football. That's, the, that's almost always the mistake all receivers make. Trying to get stuff. They, they make they want to make a big play instead of just taking the sure five or six yards. Third and nine. Now Randy Jordan joins Zach Crockett in the Raider backfield. Hey, Derek, you got first cross. Oh, a little shovel pass inside the 20 to the 18-yard line is Jordan. Boy, that was a good audio as he watched that play. Did you hear? Watch first crossing. Watch the first crossing. So that tells you what's on the mind of the Miami Dolphins. But looks like a pass. Gannon drops back. Shovel pass inside. Oh, my gosh. Zach Thomas upended. Watch Zach Thomas fly up in the air. Steve Wisniewski gets him. I'd give him about a six on this. Degree of difficulty. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Pretty difficult. 36-yard field goal attempt by Sebastian Janikowski. He's away. And it is on the mark. It looked to be long enough to be about 56, didn't it? 4.52 to play in the first. 10 nothing. Open. Yard drive. Sebastian Janikowski caps it with a 36-yard field goal and helped immensely by the penalty-laden Dolphins. It's a 10 nothing Oakland Raider lead. Janikowski tees it up. The Raiders' first round draft pick out of Florida State. He will kick it to Autry Denson and J.J. Johnson. From the eight, it's Denson. Running room across the 25 to about the 27 yard line. And that's where the Dolphins will put it in play as we take a break and we'll come back to Oakland right after this. Greg Gumbel, Phil Simms, Armin Katayan back in Oakland. And would that be Phil? That's not your number. It must be Daryl LaMonica. You know, I, my wife gets really mad when you make fun of me. You know that? You know, what'd you say? You don't care? 4.43 to play in the first quarter. Here comes a blitz. Left side. Smith out to the 27, 28 yard line. Marquez Pope with the stop, a gain of only a yard. We want to remind you. Tune in. The E Trade Super Bowl 30 for a minus four yards as you see Al Davis looking on from above. This time the first back through JJ Johnson. And a little pushing and shoving in the middle of everything. It's a four-yard pickup. It'll be third and five. We were talking at the top of the day about how Lamar Smith would perform off of that tremendous performance he had. He said the next morning, boy, was he sore. Oh, he talked so He could not get out of bed on Sunday morning. He said, I laid in bed and had to rock back and forth until I got enough momentum to get up and get out after 40 carries in an NFL playoff game. Even if you're an NFL running back, you're going to hurt the next day. Here's movement at the top of the screen. Flag in the, field. the right side of the offensive line. Now see, Greg, you could relate to that, except when you try to rock out of bed, it's because <laughs> you ate too much the night before. I thought it was the music playing. <laughs> yeah. But it he did not practice on Monday or Tuesday, Lamar Smith. 
I said, what did you do? He said, a lot of hot tubs. Encroachment, defense, number 96. Five-yard penalty remains, third down. Daryl Russell gets the evil eye from John Gruden. Well, if you play for the Raiders, you're going to get the evil eye at least once a day. We had a meeting with John Gruden on Thursday. i got to remember these days because we're right. doing a Saturday game. And, heck, he gave me the evil eye about four times during our meeting. And, of course, I lose my train of thought once he gives me the evil eye. I don't know if I said something wrong. Third and inches. Penalty marker is down. It appeared from here the Raiders Lamar's may have jumped offside. Well, you appeared right. You're sharp today. Mm. Offside, defense number 37. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. Johnny Harris. Yeah, Johnny Harris, number 37. Just trying to get inside to make a play. He knows it's third and short. And he goes, hey, they're going to run the football. So he's trying to get on the edge to get in the backfield to make that play. Now, you almost could expect these type of penalties against the Raiders early in the game. They're excited. They want to make plays. The defense having a hard time sitting there waiting for the snap count. First down. Dolphins at their own 42. Fiedler has it. Throws. Little inside out pattern is incomplete to the intended receiver Aranda Gadsden. Well, I couldn't tell if Jay Fiedler, if he could have held that football for about a half a second more, he is going to have Aranda Gadsden open. But it looked like pressure was coming. And it, it again, if you make a quarterback throw the football before he's ready, he's not going to be as accurate. That time, Jay Fiedler overthrew, overthrew a wide open Aranda Gadsden. Second and ten. Play fake to Lamar Smith, throws the outside. That's complete and out of bounds to Tony Martin, and that's a first down. Nice throw by Jay Fiedler. The Dolphins, I think, are one of the few teams left in this league. I even talked to Jay Fiedler about it last night. Uh, well, if you're going to quarterback for Chan Gailey, you're going to have to throw some footballs to the sideline and watch Tony Martin. Nice move. Sells the play down the field. Gets Rod Woodson guessing inside. It's up the field. That's why he gets open on the sideline. Chan Gailey, the Miami offensive coordinator. The give is to Smith, and Smith is pulled to a big stop by Darrell Russell for a loss of one. You know, I don't know even if Lamar Smith would have carried the football just ten times last week if he was going to have a big game against this Raiders defensive line. You know, again, to beat the Raiders, throw the football, there are holes in the secondary. The Dolphins think that. And so far today, only success when they do throw the football. None when they're running it up inside. Now Smith and J.J. Johnson in the backfield on second and 11. Straight ahead, Johnson and Johnson to the 40. It'll be third and six. You know, just, we told you early, Jay Fiedler, watch his handoff. Right hand, you know, all quarterbacks would make that to the left, but he has a torn rotator cuff on his left shoulder, and that really looks difficult. But as he said last night, I'm getting a lot of practice at it, and it kind of looks cool now. Five wide receivers on third and six. Fiedler with time, throws, it is incomplete through the hands of O.J. McDuffie just inside the Raider 30-yard line. Boy, nice design again by the Dolphins. O.J. McDuffie, that is wide open, and Jay Fiedler lets the football get away from him, throws it a little high. And that is, if I could, if you wanted to say one thing bad about Jay Fiedler, the football does get away from him sometimes, and he always misses high, which results in some interceptions that you don't want. Darian Gordon deep. Turk puts it sky high. And it is down 
and right around the five yard line. Trent Gamble got down there and killed it at about the five yard line and Fiedler's pass just a little too high for O.J. McDuffie to handle. And you know the Dolphin defense hoping to make some sort of a stand here. But straight ahead and with a hole up the middle out across the 10 yard line is Tyrone Wheatley. And head coach John Gruden. <laughs> we asked Rich Gannon, what time was he getting in here? He said about six in the morning, a couple hours after John Gruden, whose teams have been magnificent here at home, seven and one and outscoring everybody. He is Indiana John. Open John. Indiana John. <laughs> They have been awfully tough here. He looks good in that hat. Second and five. Close to the 15 yard line is Tyrone Wheatley. He'll pick up four, it's third and one. And with that, the first quarter will expire. And the first quarter belonged to the Oakland Raiders. An interception return for a touchdown by Torrey James. A Sebastian Janikowski field goal. 10 nothing Raiders after one. Back after the. At a third and one. Wheatley in Crockett. Wheatley gets the handoff across the 15 to the 16 yard line. That's enough for a first down. Rich Gannon still. Maybe feeling the effects. This was a couple of moments ago during the timeout, and he was being tended to on the sideline. Perhaps we don't know, but perhaps from that hit he took from Jason Taylor in the first quarter. Yeah, I saw him before that shot too, Greg. They looked like they were rubbing something on his back, and you know, just kind of to watch him and see if it if it does bother him. Or you know, a lot of times when guys hurt their backs, it starts to, it tightens up as time goes along. So we'll keep an eye. On it. Napoleon Kaufman is in the lineup. The give is to Wheatley, and there is not much there. Miami Dolphins very confident that that interior line, Tim Bowens and Daryl Gardner, could help put the clamps on this top-rated running game of the Raiders. Yeah, it's hard to move them. They're going against some, you know, maybe one of the biggest offensive lines in the National Football League. When you say, instead of saying Wheatley, you just got to give the nickname the Slammer, the Whammer, whatever, because John Gruden says that's my Slammer. And when the man stopped slamming it up in there, I'll get somebody else to slam it up in there. Don't be trying to go outside. Gannon to throw. Has his man out here, Terry Kirby. Kirby breaks free across 30 and down the sideline. Brought down just across midfield. Big gain for the Raiders and into Miami territory. 32 yards. Something they could not do last year against this Miami Dolphins defense. Two things. Rich Gannon couldn't get the mobility in the pocket to buy the extra time, and they couldn't do this. They couldn't get away from the uh, defenders to get some open space to run down the field to make those big plays. And we we heard, you know, we talked to Rich Gannon, and I've said it already. He says, look, i got to make some plays this game. And because he looked at that film from last year and realized he did nothing against the Miami Dolphins defense. He said we were terrible on third down, gave up sacks, couldn't make plays. Gannon pulls it down, now gets rid of it, and that is complete to James Jett. And Gannon took another shot in the backfield. Well, they're keeping him in the pocket pretty well, but he's completing passes down the field. Watch Rich Gannon as he moves around the pocket. And the big thing is, what's the Miami defensive lineman? The good thing is, they got two guys inside that don't move a lot. And then he delivers the pass. Kenny Mixon keeps hustling and gets a good hit on Rich Gannon. The ball is the 43-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. It'll be second and three. Mixon on the sidelines as the Dolphins rotate their D-line. On the reverse, and that one is bottled up big time by Jason Taylor. You know, I never thought they would hand this ball to Tim Brown coming around on every reverse for... For this reason, and if you're going to do it, don't ever think about going to Jason Taylor's side. Watch Jason Taylor as he comes up the field. It's James Jett they give the reverse to, I'm sorry. He comes up the field. He's always up the field. I said to Jason Taylor once, what do you decide on each play what to do? And he looks at me and goes, he look, every play to me is rush to passer. So that means up the field, going deep, and walks right into the reverse. 
jumping all over the place. Uh, penalty nope. markers fly. Sam Madison talked about that at length with us last night. He said, "Hey, you just kind of expect it, but you never expect him to give that ball yeah. to the to the guy coming around." He goes, "That won't work against us," and it just for that re those reasons too. I couldn't tell who jumped. Lots of people jumped. Okay. Well, well, that's a pretty day. So you know what's what's the hurry? It's nice. Get a little sun. Some lotion. I could use a little sun myself. Finally, it's going to be an offensive or an offside call against the Miami Dolphins. Offside. Defense number 99 unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty remains. Third down. You know that's that's another one. It's just a it's a. Watch Jason Taylor. Saw somebody move, or he thought trying to get a jump. But the difference between you know having third and seven and third and two, or it, of course, it's tremendous. It it actually puts the Raiders into the thought. Hey, if we run it. And it's inside one yard. We can go for it on fourth down, too. That's the third penalty on the Miami defense. Third and two. Play fake to Wheatley. Gannon throws over the middle. As his man inside the 30 to the 25 is Jeremy Brigham for a first down. Now, the problem with that on third and two, Rich Gannon couldn't make his mind up who to throw the football to because everybody was open. Ricky Dudley's wide open. The crosser's open. And then finally he finds Brigham on the inside. Nobody covering him. The Dolphins were playing run all the way. And Rich Gannon, I always think he's a better thrower sidearm than he is overhand. He throws so many footballs off balance, sidearm, but that's become his normal way of delivery. Wheatley to the 21 yard line. Robert Jones cut him down. Pick up a four. It'll be second and six. That's Gannon's sixth completion of the day to a sixth different receiver, and he will do that. He will. All you have to do is show yourself. Show your face on the field. Rich Gannon will find you. He, he's, yeah, he's not prejudiced. Get open, and I'll throw it to you. You know, here's receivers with the catch. Wow, when you have a game, look at that. Nine different guys in a couple of those games, three of them catch football passes. That shows you it's hard to lock in on one person when you're getting ready for Oakland's defense. Napoleon Kaufman on second and six inside the 20 to about the 16-yard line. Robert Jones again with the tackle. Now, a couple things. If I was the Miami Dolphins, I would get in a huddle right now. There's Jim Bates, the defensive coordinator, and say, hey, guys, this is the game. we got to do something. The defense might have to make some big plays to give their team a chance to win today. Napoleon Kaufman has been bothered by nagging injuries and he just came limping off after that carry. So he comes to the sideline. It is Wheatley and Crockett. Third and one. This is the 11th play of this drive. Wheatley. To the 15 yard line. And this will be very, very close to a first down. I heard a yell, some people yelling ball, so it must have, could have been a fumble. I don't know. Rich Gannon says, we have this much, coach. Well, what did John Gruden tell us? He's already got the field goal unit coming in. He's not even going to wait. I would wait to see the measurement here if I was the coach. Make them measure it. See how close it is. Boy, and it isn't very much. You know, if it's a... If it's less than a foot, I think you got to go for it. You got a chance to end the game almost. You got the Dolphins one mistake away if you scored from being out of this football game. Half a yard, and he says, He's kicking it. Goal. But what did he tell us, Greg, on Thursday? He goes, In this game, I am generally a conservative coach. I take the, this, this illustrates that, not going for it. Going to kick the field goal and try to get up 13 to nothing. Janikowski out of Leckler's hold will try this one from 33 yards out. 
afflicted by misses and uncertainty during the year, Janikowski has become a pretty steady kicker for these Oakland Raiders, and that one is right down the chute. 8.36 to play in the first half. It's the Raiders 13 to nothing on the Miami Dolphins. On the scoring drive by the Oakland Raiders. And you know, they say, well, the Dolphins were down 14 nothing a week ago to Indianapolis at halftime, but they were at home. This time they're on the road. Audrey Denson going to run it out of the end zone. And gets hammered at the 12 yard line. Randy Jordan led the charge. 15 yard return, and the Dolphins will pretty much start in a hole when we come back. As they are so adept at doing, the Raider fans raising a little noise as Miami goes to work from their own 12 yard line. Lamar Smith, J.J. Johnson line up behind Fiedler. Who's going to throw? Outside, Johnson. To the 15. And fights his way close to the 20-yard line. And that's a pretty decent pickup on first down from deep in their own territory for Miami. Eight yards, it'll be second and two. You know, Greg, you look at this, and you made a comment before we went to commercial. The Dolphins are not at home. When you think about this playoff weekend... Just remember, the four teams that are home, they did not play last week. Think of it like a fight. The Raiders are in the first round of the fights. They're fresh. The Dolphins, they went into overtime. They traveled. It's like round 10. You know, they're exhausted. They got to they gotta come up with a way to try to win this game. Lamar Smith takes the pitch, drives the left side, not there. And that's not going to be the way they're going to win this game today. They're going to win this game today. If they come back, it's going to have to be either the defense makes big plays, but I think it's going to be Jay Fiedler. You know, all year long I heard this statement from everybody. The Dolphins, they don't ask Fiedler to win the games. They just ask him not to lose it. And, of course, you can imagine my reaction to that. You've never played quarterback in the National Football League to say that. But today they need him to throw the ball accurately, make good decisions, to win to have a chance to win he has four wide receivers on third and four here comes the blitz throws it back the other way completes it to Denson Denson first down yardage and more across the 30 to the 32 yard line Marquez Pope finally drags him down and that's a pretty good job of eluding trouble by Jay Fiedler what a call now this you know what this is this is the coaches making this first down it's a nice play action fake Fiedler runs all the way to the right. Oh, shoot. It's the throwback screen, the, the defense says. They get over. They make good reactions to stop it. But Chan Gailey, the offensive coordinator, you're playing against him. You're going to see about five different screens. You're probably going to see a reverse. And then maybe one or two trick plays somewhere in the course of this game. On first down, Smith, 40, 43. Loose football picked off by Charles Woodson. Well, you finally get the football moving. You got the Raiders guessing. Lamar Smith finally gets a hole, and he doesn't hold on to it. Look at that running lane. Hasn't even seen any space today. I couldn't see who reached in and grabs it. Remember, Lamar Smith did not practice much this week. He well, spent most of his week in recovery. I think Daryl Russell reached in and grabbed his arm, but I'm not sure they caused the fumble. It looked like the ball, it just slipped. 43-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Gannon goes back to work. Wheatley. Inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. Well, let's watch Lamar Smith on the fumble. You tell me if you think this football is ripped out. Daryl Russell's big hand gets him on the bicep. Oh, there's another hand. Oh, yes, that's what it is. Daryl Russell's the second hand that reaches. I didn't even see that. That's what pulled his hand away from the football. You know, Reed plays a great. Aren't you? It only takes me about three times before I notice it. Second and five, Gannon to throw. Throws out wide open, incomplete to Ricky Dudley. Gannon throwing the ball behind his tight end. It'll be third and five. 
Well, that's nice play calling, too. Second and five. You've just mushed it for five. The defense is digging in. You throw a play action in again. Ricky Dudley wide open on the outside. You know, the other thing that I've seen so far, you talked about Bowens and Gardner. They're big. They're hard to move. But they got three guys on the inside of this Raider offensive line. Mo Collins, Steve Wisniewski, and Barrett Robbins who can match them in that size department. Cannon steps up on the move, looking for a first down, and he got it. The one thing that the Miami Dolphins don't want Rich Cannon to do is to beat him, beat them with his feet. Well, the, here's how you stop it. You know, your two inside rushers cannot be stars. They got to stay back. Look at the lane they created. One's upfield, one gets washed the other way, and it makes it too easy for Rich Cannon to run out of the pocket. We're going to measure. You know, Greg, the Miami Dolphins pass rush. He makes the first down. The sacks come from the outside rushers, Trace Armstrong and Jason Taylor. Let them do the work. Make them make Rich Gannon step up, and then your inside rushers should clean it up. Yeah, the inside guys, Tim Bowens and Daryl Gardner, each had two and a half sacks this year. On the outside, Jason Taylor had 14 and a half. Trace Armstrong, 16 and a half. Somebody has got to stay back and wait for the quarterback to move up. First down open. To the 30. Napoleon Kaufman to the 25 still on his feet, making Randy Jordan. Randy Jordan all the way to the 25 yard line. And I'll pick up of nine. You know what we're seeing? We're seeing one team that didn't have any contact last week and another one that had a lot of it. So the Raiders are fresh. And look at Jordan just fighting. Breaking tackles. You know, the Dolphins, they are a terrific tackling team. And look at this. Jason Taylor misses. Linebacker misses. Brock Marion misses. And Robert Jones almost doesn't get him down. Tim Brown in motion now. The give is to Terry Kirby. And Kirby looking. It's, you know, I played in games like this where we had the week off and the physical part, you cannot underestimate the difference. And what did Steve Wisniewski say to us on Thursday? Oh, he goes, man, I can't wait to hit somebody. You know, and so that's the feeling. You know, football players are trained. Every Sunday, it's like, hey, I need some contact today. And you miss that one Sunday, you know, you, you really want it. I know you can't relate to that, Greg, but they like the contact. Not holding hands. To each his like own. That. Yes. Weekly back in the game, play fake, Gannon rolling, rolling, rolling. Now he's going to pull it down and run. He gets out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Close to another first down. Well, I'm not going to say Rich Gannon is like one of the best throwers in the NFL. I know he's not, and his coach even knows that. But when you take his decision-making and his ability to know when to move, to get those yards, you put it all together and look at that. Him and Donovan McNabb. You know, there are some running backs in the National Football League who are envious of those numbers. First down, Oakland. Hey, Rich Gain, a lot of people drafted him. When he was drafted, they thought he might be a running back. Wheatley. Trying to move the pile. It's close to the 10-yard line. Picked up two on the play, and it'll be second and eight. You know, we... These, this Raider team, too, as you see that last run, it is an old-school team. And by that, I mean we talk so much nowadays, smaller, faster. Boy, the Raiders, if they got off the school bus before a game, you go, wow, they got to be good because they got the biggest, most impressive-looking people of any team we cover. This drive, a 33-yard drive, and all of them on the ground. down run tripped up and forward to the five yard line tim bowen reached out and got a hand on him pick up a five and it'll be third and three but first we will get the two-minute warning 
Two minutes to play here in the first half, which has belonged to the Raiders as they look to stretch their lead when we come back. On third and three. Gannon throws, and he is touchdown. And now, wait, it is a touchdown. James Jett with the quick slant got into the end zone, and the Raiders are on the board again. James Jett on the outside. Tim Brown was doubled on the inside. Rich Gannon, good decision, and he just stuffs it in there. Watch, it just fires it right to the body of James Jett. He makes him catch it. And we got a little hold up here. Nope, no, we don't. I was going to say, are you sure he crossed that end zone line? Janikowski for the extra point. It is good. A minute 53 to play here in the first half. Rich Gannon on the mark to James Jett. And the Raiders are in charge. It is party time as they approach halftime here in Network Associates Coliseum. The Raiders with a 20 to nothing lead and Janikowski to kick it away to Denson and J.J. Johnson. Denson two yards deep in the end zone. 15, 20 to about the 21 or 22 yard line. David Dunn makes the tackle after a 24-yard return. A minute 47 to play in the first half. Hold your heads up. Oh, I don't think it's over. I think that the opportunities down the field, throwing the football, have been there, and they will be there in the second half. And even in this drive, can you protect the quarterback to let him throw? That's Dolphins have all of their timeouts remaining. Fiedler pulls it down, rolls, throws, incomplete. There's an opportunity lost right there as Audrey Nenson just had it and dropped it. Well, when you played last week, you're coming out here, you're playing a team that's rested. You know you almost have to do everything perfectly. And we've documented it, Greg. They've had those chances. They didn't take advantage of them. They had some penalties on defense that led to a field goal. And now, just like then, drop pass. Could have been a first down. Get things going. Five wide receivers and everybody's jumping offside. No play. Defense in the neutral zone. Prior to the snap, neutral zone infraction, defense number 91, which caused the offense to move. Rig it up, Shaw. See, it's... Being up here in the booth, it was the same when I was a player. I always knew who the penalty was on. The other guys. Yeah, that's right. The ball moves out to the 27-yard line. Comes the blitz. The handoff is to Denson. Denson to the 30 and is knocked down before he can get to the first down marker. Darian Gordon, Anthony Dorsett stop him after a four-yard pickup, and the Dolphins will look at a third and one. Yeah, still plenty of time for the Dolphins. I like this. Don't call a timeout. Make the Raiders adjust. Fiedler with time. Over the middle. Dropped again. Audrey Denson had it. Had the first down. All he had to do was hold on, and he did I was almost for sure that the Raiders would move the ball. I mean, the Dolphins would move this football down the field and give themselves at least a chance to kick the field goal. But Audrey Denson with two big drops in that drive. You know, I can almost imagine Dave Wanstead at halftime saying, OK, have we made just about every mistake we can possibly make? <laughs> Darian Gordon awaits the punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 30-yard line. We have a minute seven to play in the first half and Sunday on the People's Choice Award. So there's hope for all of us. You know, we could maybe we could put some tuxedos on and try to look good. Raiders owning the football in time of possession. And the 
that play is going to go nowhere. Randy Jordan carries, and the clock has one minute remaining now here in the first half. Loss of one. It'll be second and 11. Well, John Gruden, run the football, and what you do, you find out immediately what the Dolphins are going to do. They're going to let the clock run. So, John, hey, you're up 20 to nothing. He's very happy going at halftime looking with, with this score. He's very happy. He just won't show it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Armin is going to talk to him before he goes into the locker room, and I can't wait to see the look on his face. Brace yourself, Armin. Get a longer mic. Gannon over the middle finds his man. That's a first down to Andre Risen. 14 yard pickup, and the Raiders stop the clock with 26 seconds to play. Now, a little surprised that they do throw the football, but good protection. Andre Risen wide open down the field. And the one thing I've, I've kind of seen today, this Dolphin defense, it is very good. And it's been solid all year long. But they're going up against a big, powerful offense in the Raiders. How about the receivers Rich Gannon has to throw to? Tim Brown comes into this game number six all time in receptions in the NFL. Andre Risen number 12. Yeah, that's pretty strong stuff. Andre Risen, of course, was a pickup for the Raiders uh, this year from Kansas City. He was waived by them, and John Gruden couldn't be happier. Another, like you say, great, an experienced receiver who knows how to make plays, especially in these type of games. 44-yard line of the Raiders. Jordan and Crockett in the backfield. Gannon steps up, looks, has time, throws. It is incomplete, and the penalty marker is down. Marker flew on this side of the field. Well, three Miami defenders turned around when they saw the flag and looked at the official and said, not me. Holding defense number 29. That's a five-yard penalty with an automatic. Sam Madison. It's Sam Madison. Why they all turn around and look is because they use their hands so much. But you know what? Sam Madison made a good point to us last night, and even that play might illustrate it a little. He says, I do all that contact inside that five-yard zone. You know, you're allowed to chuck them, in a, but you can't reach up and grab them with both hands outside the shoulders, which is going to be called. Shovel pass again. Randy Jordan. Jordan fighting for first down yardage and comes up about a yard or two shy. Jerry Wilson with the tackle after a nine yard gain and the Raiders use their second time out to stop the clock with 13 seconds left. Well Jerry Wilson comes on a blitz and of course the Raiders they don't care. Here he comes on a blitz. You know why they don't care. They don't even have to pick him up. They got the shovel pass. And a good, well, oh, nice hustle by Jerry Wilson. Makes the tackle and tries to cause a fumble from behind. So that's the thing. Never give up. You, you know, always keep hustling. You can work yourself back into the play sometime. Only five times this year the Miami Dolphins have given up 20 or more points. And here are the Raiders with 20 in the first half. Now, you know, if the Raiders did not gain a yard... I think they would try the field goal. I watched the band, Sebastian Janikowski before the game make them with ease from 60 yards. Now, of course, that's practice footballs, not these game balls, which can be a little harder and tougher to kick. It would be about 60 from here. The pass to the outside. Terry Kirby breaks free, has the first down, and timeout is called with six seconds left on the clock. Here comes Sebastian Janikowski. See, this is going to be about a 56 or 7-yard field goal. Janikowski kicked 22 of 32 on the year, and his long for the season was 54. See, John Gruden says, now, Sebastian, go out there and put your rump into it because this is the biggest kicker in the NFL by far. Sebastian is listed at 6'1". 255. That's a lot of leg into that football. Yeah, 255. Hey, look at him. <laughs> you know, sometimes in these NFL rosters, they lie. They don't do it like college. College, they give you more weight. In the pros, they go the other way. This one will be 57 yards.
Shane Leckler will hold. He gets it away. It's straight enough, but it comes up short. Got underneath it. Could, the sound, too much spin on the football. You could tell right away it was short. Dave wants that, thinking about what he's going to tell his Miami Dolphins in the locker room. My guess is he'll have a lot to say. Dolphins and turnovers have made a huge difference in this game. It was Jay Fiedler being intercepted and returned 90 yards by Torrey James and then a touchdown pass to James Jett. 20 to nothing Raiders back after this word from your local station. Kowski kicks. Denson from the goal line. Takes a tackle across the 20, 25, still on his feet, and now out of bounds just over the 30-yard line. 31-yard return as we take a look at the halftime numbers. Time of possession heavily favoring the Raiders, and of course the 14 points off of turnover. Everything, the score not misleading, 20 to nothing. Raiders dominate in every category. The good thing for the Dolphins, you got the football, good field position. Line of scrimmage, the 32-yard line. Lamar Smith starts the second half. Six carries, five fumbles on the day. Fiedler pulls it down and is going to run and slides down at the 37-yard line. Greg Beekert making the stop, and let's check in with Armin. Greg, I talked to Dave Wanstad about the turnovers. He said, obviously, they were critical. He said, we wanted to strike first, but then we started to fall behind. We give up two touchdowns off the turnovers. And I asked him about the fact that he told us yesterday. He said he was concerned. Six tough games. Was there any gas left in the tank? He said, we got gas. He said, we're just not making any plays. Back to you. All right, Armin. They did have the opportunity to jump on top early before the interception. Second and five. Left side, not much there. Elijah Alexander and Daryl Russell gang up on Lamar Smith after a one-yard gain. It'll be third and four. Told you that the Dolphins trailed Indianapolis a week ago. How about December 24th at New England? They were down 21-17, came back to win. So there is some come from behind in this team. Well, that gives you hope. And listen, it lets the players know they got that in their memory. They said, look, we've been down before, so they should still have some confidence. And knowing they got a chance to come back and win the game. Five wide receivers on third and four. Pulls it down, tries to run for it, not going to get there. Daryl Russell grabbed him and wouldn't let go. Now, Daryl Russell told us about Jay Fiedler. He says he scares me a little bit because he sees a little of Rich Gannon in him. Yeah, he does. Daryl Russell, number 96. This is a big guy. This is not like the typical inside defensive lineman who stands there and just stops a run. He is one of the best pass rushers in the National Football League from the inside position, and you could see what a good athlete he was just in that last play. Turk kicks it away. Darian Gordon from the 22. Up the sideline. 40. And knocked down at the 46-yard line by Turk. Matt Kirk, the punter, makes the stop after a 24-yard return. More good field position for the Raiders. Timeout in Oakland. You know, kickers get a lot of grief sometimes for the way they play, but look at him step up and deliver the hit to Darian Gordon. What I like is after he makes the hit, look at it. And we're not going to get a chance to see it. He walks over to him and kind of like, hey, what do you think about that? Yeah, I'm a punter. Rich Gannon holds on and then goes down behind his 40-yard line, Robert Jones with the stop. Let's go down, Armin. You know, Greg, you mentioned Matt Turk, and this day obviously brings very, very many mixed emotions for him. In college, he stood on the sidelines here and watched his older brother, Dan, who was a punter and a long snapper for the Raiders. And then this summer, Dan was diagnosed with cancer, and he passed away at Christmas time at the age of 38. And I spoke to Matt before the game and gave him our condolences, and he said, you know, Dan was a Raider at heart. He said, I'm always be thinking about my brothers, especially today on this field. Back to you. Thanks, Armin. Our sympathies to the Turk families. Pass is complete over midfield. Andre Risen, and what a bullet from Rich Gannon. That's a couple of yards short of a first down. 14-yard pickup makes it third and two. It's a really nice play the Raiders have designed. Andre Risen is going down the middle of the field. 
and he stops and then goes back to the outside and that's the first time I've kind of seen that this year and I'm sure Jerry Wilson who's covering him is going wow I haven't seen that so it's different you know a, little, a new wrinkle in a game like this the playoffs and the Raiders have gotten two big plays out of it so far Raiders spread the field again on third and two Jordan the only back He's out on the pattern. Cannon pulls it down. Going to run. First down. Slides down inside the 40. First down. Oakland Raiders. Well, you know the one thing, Greg. Is, and I'm sorry to interrupt you here, but you, when you see, you hear defenses talking about we're going to stop the quarterback and all that. Well, and what did one coach say to us? Yeah, that stuff is always nice to hear during the week. But once that whistle blows, what a defensive lineman think of? I'm going to sack that quarterback. So. Again, wide open lanes, Rich Gannon, he's quick, easy for him to get out and make a first down. Four carries for 26 yards for Rich Gannon. Wheatley. Wheatley pulls his way across the 35-yard line. Derek Rogers pulled him down. Six-yard gain, second and four. Well, you saw where they ran that football that time, right up the middle against those two big guys inside. Zach Thomas, number 54. Well, he gets in and gets a hand on the tackle, but Mo Collins, the right guard, is able to get past those Bowens and Gardner, the two big guys inside, and get to Zach Thomas, and they make the tackle six yards down the field. Second and four, Wheatley, running room, back to the side, across the 30 to about the 28-yard line, and a first down. Now, you know, the reason why they fake that reverse all the time is because it makes it easier for your offense. Sometimes you get out number. Watch, nobody's going to block Jason Taylor, and then Wheatley's going to cut it back. Because, look, Jason Taylor has to honor the reverse, but he's going to go up the field, we've already said anyway, but most teams, they send the guy there, so now, hey, don't even block him. Pretty smart, huh, Greg? It's like throwing a block without a blocker out there. Okay. Wheatley's to the right side, inside the 25 to the 22, and Zach Thomas says, boy, I know whenever Tyrone Wheatley gets the football, more often than not, he's running to his right and my left. Yeah, you're right, and if you watch this game so far, Zach Thomas says they have a big tendency going to the right, and ooh, Tyrone Wheatley, big, gets low, takes it and drives Zach Thomas backwards for another yard. Oakland with the NFL's number one rushing offense during the year, averaged 154 and a half yards a game. They're up to 90 so far today. We do right side. And Zach Thomas is waiting for him. <laughs> Zach Thomas had his playbook. He goes, hold on a second. I'll tell you exactly how often he runs yeah, to that side. Yeah, he's got everything documented. And you, 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 Greg, we had to laugh because he had enough notes in this playbook. There's not enough time to read those notes, much less write them all that he had written down. So, you know, he during the week, he said, I think seven to eight games he studied from start to finish on the Oakland Raiders. And he told us some tremendous things about the game. Oh, that's a, that's a dolphin. Yeah, a dolphin on the ground. Third and five. Gannon pumps, pulls it down, and is going to run. Slides down for a first down. That extra little bit of offense that Rich Gannon brings to a football game. You know, Rich Gannon's doing a good job. He's doing a good job of standing in the pocket, looking down the field, trying to find open receivers. Now, watch how quick he is. He's got really quick feet. Uh, I don't know about this slide, though. It's just so casual. And, but look, at you can see he's looking to the sideline to see where the first yard mark, first down marker is. And he got there. Another good job. Terry Kirby gets the handoff this time. Not much up the middle as he gets to about the 15. A pickup of three, and Zach Thomas was slow getting up. Now, remember, he missed four games toward the tail end of the season with a high ankle sprain. Yeah, he even told us last night that it's, it's been a tough year physically for him. And the frustration that he shows there may be an indication that he re-injured that ankle. 
Antoine Russell goes in to replace Zach Thomas at middle linebacker. Seven straight rushing plays for the Oakland Raiders. Crockett and Kirby in the backfield. Gannon flips it out here incomplete, and Crockett wasn't looking for the football. Not soon enough, anyway. Well, the Miami Dolphin defense, you got to take chances. You got to make a play. You know, you got to get the football back for your offense. That's what you really, the pressure is now. It's not only stopping the Raiders, but doing it quickly so you can give your offense at least four or five possessions here in the second half. The way we're going now, they're going to get about three. Continue to talk to Zach Thomas on the sideline. He continues to limp. Open six out of nine on third downs, looking at a third and seven. Gannon throws this side, wide open. T Brown, first and goal inside the five yard line. You know, it's Tim Brown, it's like, where's Waldo? He's always moving. This time he comes all the way across. James Jett goes up the field. And the longer Rich Keenan held the football, the farther the defense ran away from Tim Brown. Now, the one thing I think the Raiders are very good at, a lot of different looks, a lot of motion. So that makes the defense thinking the, play, the ball's getting ready to be snapped. And you're thinking, oh, here's a different look. What am I going to do? And now they can't react quick enough to the football. Zach Thomas back into the game. First and goal. Wheatley, right side. Touchdown. That was an impressive drive by the Raiders. You think the game of football's changed a lot? Let's all keep hearing, oh, the game's different nowadays. It is, huh? It's the big and the strong. That's who's winning. That's what we're seeing so far in the playoffs. And the Raiders have really demonstrated that today. Fine lead block by Zach Crockett. Janikowski's extra point is good. 5.56 to play in the third quarter. Oh, the Raider faithful out and forth and smiling. It's a 27-0 lead. Raiders and their fans looking for a berth in the AFC Championship game. The first third quarter touchdown allowed by the Dolphins all season. They had not allowed a second half touchdown in their last four games. Tyrone Wheatley got it. Janikowski's kick. Audrey Denson will not run this one out of the end zone. The Dolphins will start from their own 20-yard line. Tyrone Wheatley behind Zach Crockett. Boosting the Raider lead to 27 points. Miami bench. First down Dolphins from their own 20-yard line. 5.50 to play in the third quarter. Miami finds themselves down 27-0. Fiedler eludes the rush, throws over the middle. It is complete. O.J. McDuffie took the hit from Anthony Dorsett. 17 yards and a first down. Dave Weinstead's going, man, finally somebody made a play. But O.J. McDuffie, good job by Jay Fiedler buying some time. And you might as well catch it because they're going to hit you anyway. Out to the 37, first down. Lamar Smith, this side. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Charles Woodson and Anthony Dorsett for a loss of two to make it second and 12. Yeah, Lamar Smith, it's just, you got to throw the football. You hand it off to him just to break the monotony of throwing, but there's just nowhere to go. The Raiders' defense against the rush, one of the best in the league. And you got a running back that's physically beat up, so it just it's tough to make good yards. Oh, we told you about Lamar Smith, who said he had never before carried 40 times in one game before last week. The gift to J.J. Johnson and Johnson to about the 39-yard line. You know, getting back to Lamar Smith, 
you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that he said, he told us no other team gave me a chance. They told me I'll have to go out there and fight for the job, and his aim was to come in and win the starting running back job in Miami, and he did just that. He did it, and you know, it was interesting. I saw Chan Gailey being interviewed this morning. He talked about it. He says, when you see him out of pads and we practice, you know, we kind of in your underwear, that type of stuff, he's not that impressive. But when you go out there and put the shoulder pads on, Lamar Smith is very impressive. Fiedler waits, throws incomplete on the slant intended for Gadsden. Charles Woodson was right along with him. Well, the Raiders, they put the pressure on their corners. Charles Woodson and Eric Allen. Fiedler was only going one place with that football. Waited, 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 and couldn't complete it. Gaston could not get away from Charles Woodson. Gordon back at his own 20-yard line for the kick from Turk. This one bounces and kind of dies at about the 30-yard line, and that's where it's down by the Dolphins. 30-yard punt. Pro Bowl cornerback Charles Woodson. Sticks with his man, breaks up the pass. Raider ball when we come back. Back in Oakland. 3.39 to play in the third. It's Raiders from their own 30-yard line with a 27-0 lead. Wheatley, right side for a couple. Haley and Jason Taylor with the stop after a one-yard pickup. It'll be second and nine. Lamar Smith on the sideline. Eight carries, four yards, and his only good run of the day ended in that fumble. This has been Lamar Smith's afternoon. Nowhere to go. Blocking, crumbling in front of him. And after you pick up 209 yards, you got to figure you're going to be in the gun sights of the opposition the next week. The pass to Terry Kirby. That's incomplete. But Greg, it's not only that. The Raiders are good against the run. You know, we've documented that fifth best in the NFL, and we can see it's not a mirage. They're good up front. And the other thing is, it's just too much to ask of any player. 40 carries. He won the game for him last week. He won it. And I think Dave once that said it, and we said it early in the game, to win today, they were going to have to throw the football, make big plays, and I thought they had to be spectacular on defense, and we have not seen that. Gannon goes down back at the 20-yard line. There's Trace Armstrong leading the charge. Well, that was good. All four defensive guys collapsed around Rich Gannon because he was looking for somewhere to run. But by the time he could find that place, Trace Armstrong ran him over. Second Miami sack of the day. And Shane Leckler will kick it away. Well, if you are a Dolphin fan and you're wondering when would be a good time to kick things into gear, now would be as good a time as any. That kick from Leckler. Ogden from his own 25. Slips and falls down at the 35-yard line. Travian Smith will get a credit for the tackle. And we have a penalty marker down. And this is going to be against the Dolphins. Running into the kicker. Number 51. Five-yard penalty is declined. First down. Tommy Hendricks is the offending player. They'll refuse the penalty. And it'll be Miami ball right after this. Driving the Oakland Raiders bus right now, John Gruden. 12 and 4 regular season. Looking for a spot in the AFC title game next week. Fiedler. Pulled it down, goes down at the 27 yard line. Roderick Coleman, Reagan Upshaw. First Oakland Raiders sack of the day. Well, everything's going wrong for the Dolphins. Jay Fiedler's going to look outside, watch him, looks to his right. The receiver's going to be open. What does he do? He slips and falls down. Fiedler has to hold on to the football and take a sack. Loss of seven, second and 17, down the far sideline. Pass is caught. 
Oh, what a catch by Aronde Gadsden inside the 40-yard line. That's a 34-yard gain, and I can't believe he caught it. You sounded so <laughs> surprised, and it's caught. I know, watch this, one-handed. Oh, gosh. He oh, pulled one in one-handed a week ago against the Colts. That is, listen, we've talked about before, Aronde Gadsden has the pair, the biggest pair of hands I've ever seen on a receiver. That pass thrown, and that Fumble. now is a live ball. It has not been ruled an incomplete pass. Torrey James has the football and is on his way to the end zone. No whistle blew. You saw Dave Wanstead already reaching for the replay button. It's not going to matter. He was hit as he was trying to throw it. Tony Bryant, number 94, made the, made the hit. And Leslie Shepard did not have to hustle after the football. He didn't know it was a backward pass or a fumble. Let's watch Fiedler. The arm is hit. The ball goes backwards. backwards. And it's not, we saw it. It was almost right in front of us. Jay Fiedler does not, does not have a chance. The football goes backward, and Torrey James, look at that. He realizes he hadn't heard the whistle, picks it up. Too late now for Leslie Shepard to make the play. And Dave Wanstatt first went to the button on his belt and had the red flag in his hand to challenge this one. The question is whether or not the ball went backwards from where he threw the football. He's at the 47. And let's see where the ball comes down. Oh, Greg, it absolutely goes backwards. From that angle, we could, the other angle you could see. See if we can tell from this spot. He's at the 47-yard line. Watch where it hits. The ruling on the field comes down at the 48. is that the quarterback's arm started forward for a forward pass. Therefore, it is by definition a forward pass, even though the ball goes backwards. Therefore, it's incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. That what they're saying, and, and they're right, Greg, his arm is going forward. He's trying to throw it forward. And even though it does land backwards, because it's knocked backwards by the hand of Tony Bryant. Well, Dave wants that seems okay with it. Well, of course he does. <laughs> but Jay Fiedler had his arm going forward, starting the action of a forward pass. That's what Phil Luckett said, and, he, and he's right. The arm is coming forward. Watch his arm come forward. It's, def it's definitely moving forward. Then it's hit. That's what makes the football go backwards. Well, they're explaining it to John Gruden on the sideline. I find it I find it kind of strange that 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 what what takes precedence here is intent. I mean, the physical fact is that it ended behind the point of release. We'll see what happens. John Gruden could be challenging this too. I don't know. But you could see that Jay Fiedler's motion was coming. Well, John Gruden still pressing his case. And it was a forward pass. So I believe Phil Luckett says that the challenge is that it was a forward pass. Now Phil Luckett is coming back and is going. Well, it certainly Under wasn't. It wasn't Phil Luckett who ruled it incomplete because he ran downfield. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. This is an incomplete pass because the quarterback. Timeout open. 
you know on this play Phil Luckett ran the length of the field with Torrey James and signal touchdown so he certainly didn't blow the play dead. He did not rule an incomplete pass Greg you're right somebody else must have but once it was ruled an incomplete pass on the field I've seen this happen a couple of times even if it was deemed to be not a forward pass it would still be the Miami Dolphins football all they would lose was the yardage where it went you understand I saw it on a Monday night game a couple years ago I will tell you this Phil it is second and ten there you go line of scrimmage the 39 yard line Just under a minute and a half to play here in the third quarter. Fiedler from the shotgun, rolling, looking, throws. This side, it is incomplete, out of bounds. Leslie Shepard rolling out of bounds without establishing an inbounds presence. It'll be third and ten. Well, it's so hard in this situation. If you're the Miami Dolphins, it's you know, where do you find the energy to go on? That's what happens. You're sitting over there thinking, I can't believe we're in this situation down 27 to nothing. Divisional playoff game on the road. Five wide receivers. Fiedler throws this side. Shepard has it. Is immediately knocked to the ground by Torrey James, who has had a heck of a game here today. Well, it's fourth down. Dave Wan said, said, we're going to go for it. Jay Fiedler just trying to find an open receiver. Torrey James in his fifth year out of LSU. 90-yard return of the interception in the first quarter for a touchdown. Fourth and eight for Fiedler and the Dolphins. Pass down the seam. It is incomplete. Knocked down by Torrey James. It's almost like the Dolphins came into this game today and said, hey, we like our matchup. We get one of our receivers against Torrey James. But he has made numerous plays, and that's another good play. So the Raiders take over at their own 37-yard line with 31 seconds to play here in the third quarter. It's just terrific position by Torrey James. Crockett in the backfield. The give is to Jordan. And not much there. Daryl Gardner, Zach Thomas converge. And that likely will be the last play of the third quarter. Yeah, put Randy Jordan in there. Let him get some carries and tell Tyrone Wheatley start resting up. You're going to have to plug it up in there again next week for us. Final seconds of the third quarter wind down and the Oakland Raiders change ends of the field. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Raiders 27 and the Dolphins nothing. We'll come back to Oakland after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on C in Kentucky when you were growing up? Yes, of course. What are you trying to insinuate? We don't do those things no, in Kentucky? I never had no. No, I never did. saw a punt pass and kick when I was a kid. Oh, really? No, I actually participated in them one time. Didn't win. Being a sore loser that I am, I didn't go back. <laughs> 38-yard line. The Miami Dolphins down 27 nothing as we start the fourth quarter. And Terry Kirby on the ground for a yard to make it third and eight. 
Well, Wade Wanstat just left to wonder, boy, look at that. I've never been shut out in the postseason. Well, they've been in so many of those playoff games with some guy, quarterback, named Dan Marino, so it's kind of tough to shut him out no matter how good your defense is. And before that, a guy named Greasy. Time. Now runs out of time. Ball is loose. And the Dolphins fall on it. Trace Armstrong covered the loose football. And the Raiders turn it over in their own territory, their first turnover of the day. Well, Rich Gannon, he sees the sack is going to come, and Lorenzo Bromel just keeps after him. And I know he felt the pressure. It looks like hey, he's going to wrap it up, take the sack. Nobody's open down the field. Watch Gannon as he moves up in the pocket. Does a good job. And before he can secure the football away, Bromell knocks it out. So Miami takes over now the Oakland 42-yard line. A little activity on the Miami sideline. You look at the turnover battle today. Fiedler, quick pass this side. Another drop pass. This one by Autry Benson, who just not just has not had a terrific day catching the football. And Roderick Coleman, number 57, I have noticed watching come around the inside. Oh, man. That's a big hit. Watch number 57 fight his way through. Gets around Mark Dixon. And Feeder lands on that. Remember that left shoulder. He has a torn rotator cuff, so those shots got to hurt. Second down, pass to the outside, and this time McDuffie holds on and is out of bounds just short of the 35-yard line. Well, I'm sure Dave Weinstead is sitting over on the sideline wanting to know, well, is that initial burst over with? Are the Raiders tired yet? And, you know, all the things he was worried about. The Raiders came out. The Dolphins, they helped them. They put them in position to start to run. But the Raiders' size over the course of this game has been the difference, I think, going against up against both lines of the Miami Dolphins. Fiedler gets rid of it down the side. It's incomplete, almost intercepted by Eric Allen. And it'll be fourth and four. And for the best playoff coverage on the net, more battle-tested than the Raiders were because every week has been a, a crisis and a come-from-behind situation for the Dolphins. He thought they were better prepared mentally coming into this game. Yeah, he was hoping for a close game in the fourth quarter, Greg. That has not happened. But the, the Dolphins, for the past six weeks, have been playing tough games trying to get in the playoffs. On fourth down, the pass pulled down inside the 25-yard line by Tony Martin. And that's a first down for Miami. But... But, and Armin Katayan said it earlier, the big if, the big if is my team is the gas tank empty. And he did worry a little bit, a bit about that. That's why they practiced. He had easy practices this week trying to rest him up and get him ready for this game. That one thrown wide of McDuffie on the sideline. It'll be second and ten. Plus, as you mentioned, that, that, that opening surge by the Raiders, it's tough when that surge lasts three quarters. You know, that's right. The NFL... The one thing, you know, you can talk about all the sports, but the NFL, they set this playoff uh, scenario up. It favors the teams that have the best seasons. So the Raiders, all the teams that are sitting home, get that week off, you get rested, you get hungry to play. The other teams are tired, they come to your place. It's a tremendous advantage for the home teams. Second and 10. Give it to Denson. Denson dancing across the 20. And a loose ball is blown dead. Eight yards on the play. It'll be third and two. Big Darrell Russell comes trotting back on the field, and they're going to go hurry up. Raiders just barely get off the field in time. Fiedler runs wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Tony Martin. And markers are down in the backfield. Holding against the Dolphins will bring that one back.
You know, Jay Fiedler has a look on his face like, well, that's about par for the course today. Yeah, Dave once said he didn't even get upset. You're down 27 to nothing. There were two fouls on the offense. Ineligible downfield, number 61 is declined. Holding, number 71 is accepted. 10 yard penalty repeat. Third the down. holding is on rookie right tackle Todd Wade, number 71. Todd Wade, you're right, Greg, the rookie. He's had a solid year for the Miami Dolphins. Look to the right side of your screen. He's on Darrell Russell. Got a hold of that dirt. Good, pretty good grip. Darrell Russell fell down, so when the officials saw that, made it easy to throw the flag. Third and 12. Fiedler needs to reach the 14-yard line for a first down. Going to loft this one toward the end zone. It is overthrown, incomplete. Gadsden down there along with Charles Woodson. Well, you know, we were talking earlier. You know, I talked about the players. What a feeling. But think about Dave once that all the emotion and the work he put in during the offseason, getting his team from Jimmy Johnson, who, re who retired in. What a feeling it must be for a coach. All the long hours they put in that office and the worrying and everything that goes with it and know that it's it's over. Your season and your hopes of going to the Super Bowl are over. Going for the end zone. This pass is incomplete, overthrown. Tony Martin along with Eric Gallon in the corner of the end zone and the ball goes over to the Oakland Raiders with 12.32 to play in the fourth quarter wear one because you got to have a neck to wear a turtleneck Tyrone Wheatley for a couple of yards <laughs> have you forgotten how, right have you forgotten how big Mike Ditka is well he's the look he's a long way away he's out <laughs> I'm in Oakland he's in New York if he's upset about that comment just reach over and take it out on Jim yeah just imagine that's me but he knows where you live <laughs> At the 29 yard line, second and eight. Randy Jordan, Zach Crockett in the backfield. This is Jordan, right side, can't turn the corner, run out of bounds. Number 31, Brock Marion. You know, every once in a while, we've gotten. We've gotten a look at John Gruden over there on the sideline. He is he is a man of many faces, and they pretty much all look the same. Daryl Russell was filling us in. Like the, the the players love to have nicknames for him, and one was Ricky Schroeder, Ricky Schroeder, and yeah. another is Doogie Hauser. But I think the fan favorite is Chucky. It is Chucky? <laughs> so we have formed him. I said, "What do you think about all those nicknames the players give you?" Here we go. There's Chucky. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, aren't these players there something, aren't they? He goes, I got nicknames for them, too, you know. Just can't say them in public on the draw. Randy Jordan, and what a hit from Brian Walker after a five-yard gain. And you know, it's, just not, it's something that's been picked up by the fans. Take a look at the Chucky dolls around the stadium here today. Uh, but it's, you know what, it's... To our house. It's yeah. really a sense of affection. Boy, look at that one. That's a typical. How there. It shows you the communication and the relationship he does have with his players. It's a little give and take there, which I like, but there's a tremendous, tremendous amount of respect they have for their head coach. Jeff Ogden avoided the hit head on from Eric Johnson, the rookie out of Nebraska. Miami back on offense. 10 41 to play. Well, the last few visits to the postseason have not been kind to the Miami Dolphins for the Miami Dolphins. This side complete. Leslie Shepard out of bounds. And that should be enough for a first down. Well, well lots of things for Dave Wanstead to think about during the offseason. Oh, well, there is. I think the one thing he'd like to see right here. And Jay Fiedler would too. Just find a way, throw the short passes, whatever it takes, to get down and score a touchdown before this game is over. Fiedler trying to avoid the sack and can't get out of there. Goes down at the 30-yard line, courtesy of Tony Bryant. 
Reagan Upshaw's the one that made Jay Fiedler step up. And, you know, this, this Raider defensive line, you don't hear a lot about it, but Darrell Russell, Grady Jackson inside, Reagan Upshaw on the outside along with Tony Bryant. They got size, speed, they got everything. Penalty marker down on the screen to Denson, and Denson out of bounds at the 35. And it's not like a lot of defensive lines around the league. All of them can rush the passer. They can do both, stop the run and rush the passer. Guys are not out there playing a certain role. Number 78, 10-yard penalty repeat, second down. That's the veteran left tackle, Richmond Webb. Well, I'll tell you, too, the other thing is, look at Darrell Russell. He is so big and so athletic, and the rap on him is, is that he just can't play every play of the game all out. And, but every coach, every time we've done a Raider game, we bring his name up to the opposing coach, and they said, boy, if he plays all out, he's unblockable. You just cannot handle Daryl Russell inside when he's going 100%. Second and 25. Comes a blitz. Fiedler throws. It is incomplete. Charles Woodson almost had it. Tony Martin looking for a call that he was bumped. But there appears to be a roughing the passer call against the Raiders. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 58. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. That's Elijah Alexander, and that's an automatic first down. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know, one step. He took three steps and then went high against Jay Fiedler. You saw John Gruden on the sideline, and you know he's sitting there thinking, what are we doing, guys? Well, look, you'll have plenty of things to talk about when he shows his film to his players. You know, they've made some big penalty mistakes, things they shouldn't have done, turnover, Rich Gannon fumbled. Fiedler stepping up, going to run. 40, slides down at about the 42, 43 yard line. Pick up of six, it'll be second and four. Boy, and you look at Jay Fiedler too, gets a starting job, been looking for one. You know, a journeyman quarterback around the league and got in there this year. On the slant, intercepted. Torrey James again. James to the 40, down to the 42-yard line. Torrey James may be picking his way to Defensive Player of the Week. Line, the last interception. Jay Fiedler does a good job. He looks it off, turns his right, makes a a good throw it's just a terrific play by Tory James look left hand keeps it alive then makes the catch from the 42 yard line Crockett and Kirby behind Gannon Kirby nothing there Lorenzo Bromel with the stop as these Raiders and we along with them are going to start to begin to think about the results of tomorrow's game here on CBS pitting Baltimore against Tennessee if Baltimore wins it the Ravens will come here to Oakland next Sunday if Tennessee wins it the Raiders will travel to Nashville you know as I watch this game today and I saw that shot of John Gruden what he preached to his players during the week and well I'll tell you when the plays over what his message was to them how to prepare and come about what they want to accomplish in the game. Out to the 45-yard line. Go ahead, Phil. Well, he just said, great players are defined in the playoffs. And he, he's saying this to his stars, I think, more than anything. Step up and change your lives. And that's really what the playoffs are. You know, when the football season's over, you know, all the great individual things that people do during the season, the fans and the media, we're going to remember what guys did in the playoffs. And nobody cares if 
certain quarterbacks threw for 4,000 yards during the season. Which quarterback got hot during the playoffs to throw that big pass, to make that run, whatever it is, to help his team win? Torrey James is a good example. They'll be talking, everybody here in the Bay Area will be talking about him. Rich Gannon sidearms it incomplete, intended for Jeremy Brigham. It'll be fourth down. You saw Torrey James smiling there on the sideline. Well, such a, a vital role that a guy like Torrey James plays for his football team. Nowadays, so many teams play three wide receivers. If you can have three or four defensive backs that are capable of coming into the game and playing a wide receiver and covering him like Torrey James has done today, well, you can see why they're winning. Leckler. And from the 14 is McDuffie. And McDuffie dragged down at about the 24-yard line. Torrey James with Andre Risen on the sideline. And number 20 has had himself one afternoon. In a party for the Oakland Raiders fans, Rich Gannon. Been happy to be a part of it. 12 of 18, 143 in a touchdown, and he appears to be done for the day. Bobby Hoying warming up on the sideline. As the Dolphins start from their own 24. Popped up into the air, incomplete. Josh Taves appeared to get a hand on it. Well, if I was Jay Fiedler, I'd say, hey, how about a running play? You know, because you almost need one. The, the Oakland Raiders, their defensive line, it is just rearing back and coming at the quarterback, and the Dolphins' offensive line is having a hard time just slowing them down. There is Torrey James. Speedler from the shotgun. And there's a running play. Audrey Denson across the 25 to the 27. And they're going to call this play from the line of scrimmage. Third and eight. Side, and that is complete to Denson, and Denson has run out of bounds well short of the first down. You know, we're talking about that day that Torrey James has had. It started in the first quarter, started magnificently in the first quarter. And back at the last playoff game played here in Oakland, it was Lester Hayes who had two interceptions for the Raiders, returning one of them for a touchdown. And Torrey James decided that's a pretty good page out of the history book to use. He's had two picks today and has returned one 90 yards for a touchdown. Turk kicks it away to Darian Gordon. Gordon at the 33. And down at the 35-yard line, courtesy of Larry Izzo. So with the Raiders set to advance, we look to tomorrow. The and Bobby Hoying. The fifth-year quarterback out of Ohio State comes on to replace Rich Gannon at quarterback. Three years of Philadelphia Eagle. This is his second year here in Oakland. And that handoff goes nowhere. Jason Taylor and Lorenzo Bromel with the tackle. Loss of two will make it second and 12. They look at Bobby Hoyne. He did have the opportunity last week the, when the Raiders had their week off. Something that all these teams can do. They had a chance to give him a lot of work. They rested Rich Gannon just in case. It's just another plus for a team that has a good year, gets to rest. You get a chance to work your backup quarterback in with the starting unit just in case you need him somewhere down the line. Kirby to about the 35 and it'll be third and 10. Well, you know Greg you look at this you see the Oakland Raiders what they've done all the positive positives they had during the season the quarterback plays well he played well again today they ran the football with power their defense it it was 
solid. They, they didn't give up any running uh, game to the Miami Dolphins, so that allows their pass rush to become a factor. It helps them make plays. They basically did it all year. They did it today here in the playoffs. Point in the ball to Kirby. Kirby, first down yardage across midfield and into Miami territory. Brock Marion made the stop after an 18-yard pickup. And you can't help but wonder as you watch. Kirby goes in, the other fake reverse. It opens up the backside for the running game. We saw another nice block there from Zach Crockett, and he's been doing that all day in a fill-in role for John Ritchie. And John Ritchie, the fullback, they expect him. We saw him at practice on Thursday. He expects to be back next week for the AFC Championship game. down at the 45 yard line and the clock continues to move up on 415 to play well you and I had a chance last week to see the Baltimore Ravens I think we came there's John Ritchie on the sideline hey that's a good hair day for John Ritchie <laughs> and I'm not kidding either <laughs> but we saw the Baltimore Ravens last week and their defense is well it's outstanding so is Tennessee's and you just got to start thinking wow the matchup next week the Raiders against either one of those teams is, is I think it's going to be special. No play. One, two, three, four penalty markers down. Mo Collins may have been the one to move first. Snap, ball start, offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, Reigns, second down. You know, Greg, to thinking about all the playoff games, and we talked about what an advantage this week is to the teams that are at home against the visiting teams. But I think the least margin of all the games that are going to be played this weekend will be down at Tennessee. Baltimore is physically able to match up with Tennessee. The fact that they didn't get that week rest is they are one team, I think, of the four that were traveling this week has the best chance to not get dominated physically. On second and 12 to the 45 is Kirby. You know, he mentioned that Tennessee... Well, we know about the Baltimore offense. You know about the Tennessee offense. The Oakland Raiders, whoever they face, are going to be a pretty very tired football team next week. Uh, you're, if you're, things go as expected between those two. Yeah, you know what's good about tomorrow's game? I, I say this all the time about NFL football. There's a little bit of, um, what do I want to say, hatred? Is that a good word? Good word. For Baltimore and Tennessee. And when you, when you get those emotions like that going for a game, it usually translates to saying, oh, man, this is fun to watch. Watch on TV. Pitch for Kirby. Blocking in front of him, and all of a sudden, it went nowhere. Brian Walker came up from the secondary to make the hit. Yeah, it may really, again, it makes me think. Remember last year? It was Jacksonville and Tennessee that had that little thing going. And this year, you know, Baltimore took Jacksonville's place. Look at John Gruden. Is he, is he the most active coach on the sideline? <laughs> He's pretty excited. Steve Wisniewski coming off the field and just the fact that he's congratulating him on the hey, we took it to him physically today. We ran the ball at a team that people say you can't run against. Let the sky high kick. Ogden will let this one go and it'll bounce right at the goal line and take a Raider bounce. The officials say it did not go in the end zone, went out of bounds at about the four and a half yard line. And the rookie, Shane Leckler, did his job. A little backspin, just short of the goal line. The ball, it was a perfect spiral. It went up, it turned completely over, and that's the reason why it bounced backwards. I want to remind you, coming up on the Subway post game show, join Jim, Mike, and Craig. Affected it, but uh, this was the one thing you do that could happen. The Raiders would come out, the crowd, the emotion, they play off of it. They're big, they're physical, and they took advantage of all those things against the Miami Dolphins. From their own four, Fiedler. Throwing out of the end zone, Denson to about the nine yard line. Elijah Alexander wraps him up there, and with that, we've reached the two minute warning. Two minutes remaining here at Network Associates Coliseum. The bay bound! We're going to 
Tampa. We're going to Tampa. Everybody says Tennessee Titans. They ain't got nothing. There ain't no Titans around here. This is Oakland. And I want you, George. Eddie George. <laughs> <laughs> the crew took a vote, Phil, and we vote you can tell him he's right, whether he's right or wrong. Hey, I, he needs a drink of water. He spit so much <laughs> as he was talking. It's got to be a little dry. Second and five for Fiedler. Over the middle. That's complete to Leslie Shepard. And Shepard out of bounds. Close to a first down. Appears to be just a few inches short. Another Zach Thomas. The end of a long year. Now he can get rested up and get healthy. But the guy there is Rich Gannon. Talking to the trainer Rod Martin. Morehead State graduate. Just had to throw that in there. But Gannon making his first start in the playoffs. And... You know, he performed today just like he did all year long. Steady. His running was timely. Kept drives going, and it was enough to just keep the Miami defense off guard. Denson has the first down and is out of bounds at about the 19 yard line. What are you laughing at? Because I talked about Rod Martin being a more interesting, you know, there's only. I was I was going to be I, I was I was going to be a smart aleck and say we knew the other one was somewhere around here. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Well, who's the other one besides Ron Martin? Well, yeah, just, oh, he, thank you. Oh, okay, good. So it really, it, you know, it's a big hurdle, I think, for Rich Gannon to cross. This is a quarterback. You know, it's all these years he waited so long, and he, he finally found a team and a coach that runs an offense that's very conducive to letting him be, you know, the major factor. That pass incomplete and almost intercepted into the penalty marker down in the backfield. Yeah, it's holding. Richmond Webb. John Gruden is rolling the sidelines as the Raiders have earned their first AFC championship shot since 1990. And I remember the last time they were in the championship game. The Giants were playing in one the same day. The Raiders up in Buffalo. Holding offense, number 78. 10 yard penalty remains. First down. Penalty is on Richmond Webb. You know that man is happy to be headed back to the AFC title game. Yeah, he's happy, but I've heard Al Davis speak many times. You know, he'll be happy when he holds up the Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> Don't tell me about anything else. There's no accomplishment unless you win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Fiedler rolls, throws, Leslie Shepard out of bounds. That's Daryl Gardner just, hey, it was a terrific year. They did a lot of good things, and he's just going up and down the team, and especially to those defensive players. A lot of effort, and the thing about Miami's defense, it, it was. It was not up and down this year. They had one half against, or maybe one quarter against the New York Jets where it fell apart, but besides that, they're the reason why this team made it this far. Rock solid. Denson. And Denson can't get away from Johnny Harris, number 37. It'll be a third and 14. And Dave Wanstead, you mentioned earlier, those are some big shoes of Jimmy Johnson's to come into Miami and step into. Yeah, I think the thing that's really impressed me about Dave Wanstead, he's just coaching more about feel now, not worried about what people think. That pass is out of bounds and complete. You know, he, he told us, he says, hey, when I was in Chicago, if it was Friday and I had this on the what we're going to do on the agenda, we did it. He goes, now, if it comes up to Friday and I think our team needs rest, I change everything around and just whatever feels right, I just do. I'm not married to nothing, and his team really responded very well to it this year. Fourth and 14. And the Raider fans are beginning to celebrate. Play clock is down to six, five, four, and Fiedler's going to have to hurry. I don't think he got it off. He didn't. No, they gave him about a two-second <laughs> grace period there. <laughs> they didn't want to call the delay a game.
two, one, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> and then Jay's going to get rid of the football just so he doesn't get clocked one more time today. Eight Miami penalties on the day. Dave Wanstead had a plan. He said, we don't want Rich Gannon to beat us throwing the football. He didn't count on all the penalties. He didn't count on the turnovers making such a difference here today. Boy, 27 to nothing. Listen to the crowd. Fourth and 19. Dolphins need to get the 30 yard line for a first down. Lofting it. It is intercepted by Eric Allen. Six interceptions for Eric Allen in his last six games and it doesn't matter right now but they just lost a ton of yardage on field position <laughs> well that's all the Miami Dolphins could do throw it long so the line of scrimmage is now the 46 yard line of the Oakland Raiders And that's a testament to the way the Miami Dolphins have played the postseason. And what a job the Raiders have done here today. One minute to play. Well, you know the good thing about doing the Saturday game, Greg? Get to sit down and watch the game tomorrow. It's just a tremendous thing. The This weekend, I think, is the best weekend in, in football for the fans. There we go. A lot of action. Miami needed this guy. Running on the field. 20-10. Scores. We're not going to show him, of course. First time the Miami Dolphins have ever been shut out in the postseason, and it's the Raiders' first shutout ever in the playoffs. That'll do it. John Gruden and the Oakland Raiders on their way to the AFC Championship game. They'll play the winner of tomorrow's Baltimore-Tennessee matchup. Once again, our final score, Oakland 27, the Miami Dolphins nothing.